Hello, testing, testing. All right, I think we're on. Hello, my name is Jason. Uh, I am the chief architect at Deus, at Deus um, and I've been with uh, Engine Yard for almost six years now. Uh, so almost a year ago to the, to the day, actually, uh, we joined forces with Optiman, which is a small company out of uh, Boulder that was building Deus, uh, which was a CoreOS-based uh, platform as a service um, using Fleet. Um, now a year on, we're almost finished with uh, replatforming on top of Kubernetes, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but this is where we wanted to start, and uh, it's a quote from everyone in production, and it's, uh, production is where tears are made, which I think is a pretty apt uh, discussion um, or situation. And usually, uh, tears in production come from change, right? Um, a running system usually doesn't tear itself apart, usually. Uh, so usually it's, it's operators and people inter interacting with and making modifications to the environment, which causes downtime, which causes tears. Um, and we're currently in this huge uplift in, in the industry, and everything's in containers. We're containerizing all the things, which means we're going through tons and tons of change, which means we're, we're breaking things all the time, or at least often, right? Um, our old tools don't work the way that they, they used to, um, so we've got to build a whole bunch of new ones. And we've got a bunch of systems engineers who are currently laying the tracks as fast as they possibly can just out in front of your application. So it's an interesting in environment. Um, so how do we manage change, right? You can manage change by doing a couple of different things. The first, first option is to reduce scope. You reduce scope, it's a smaller change. Smaller changes lead to fewer outages. Fewer outages lead to more confidence. More confidence leads to uh, being able to move faster, right? Sounds a lot like the Agile Manifesto, but we'll talk about it in, you know, in terms of systems, right? Agree, disagree? Yeah. So, containers are new. We want to get them into production because we feel that you know, it definitely brings a lot of benefits to the table, but how do we get there? From point A to point B, production has a laundry list of things, a million, million items long. You've got monitoring, security, and backup, disaster recovery, you've got network policies, you've got security policies, you've got business policies on top of that. It's a huge mess. And then you've got YAML coming out your nose, it's melting your face. You've got your ops team who doesn't know what the hell's going on anymore, because they can't you know, Ansible it anymore. Um, and everybody's just like, oh my god, what's happening? Um, so I propose, uh, the three-step process to uh, changing your infrastructure over to containers along the uh, crawl, walk, run sort of um, process. Crawling, we do it first. What, is, what does crawling mean? Um, is analogous in my mind to reducing scope. So if you can change and constrain the problem that you're trying to solve and make it tractable, you can start to reason about it. And if you can reason about it, then you can start to gain confidence. And at the end, hopefully, when, you, when you're actually running, the untractable problems uh, are now smaller because you have confidence. You've seen things, you've learned things, your organization has learned, your, your team has, has learned. Um, I would posit that one of the things that uh, Deus Workflow does best is 12-factor applications, right? We've constrained the scope. We aren't going to manage state which makes the scope of change with respect to your overall architecture smaller, which means it, it's tractable and you can learn. What does walking look like? Well, walking is once you have the small change, you start to automate it and you start to integrate it into your ecosystem. You're starting to learn as, as an organization uh, how these new tools work, how this new ecosystem works. You're starting to gain experience, um, which leads to confidence and ultimately running. It's where we all want to be, right? Where you can start to deprovision old legacy systems and move them into one sort of management domain. Everything in containers, containerize all the things we finally won, right? So how can workflow help with this, right? Um, and, and, and actually, what is workflow, right? Workflow is a container-based platform as a service uh, which runs on top of Kubernetes. Um, we are just about ready to finish the replatform from the full sort of soup to nuts, uh, Ceph, CoreOS, and etcd-based system onto Kubernetes. Um, beta 2 is actually going to be re released in probably 20 to 30 minutes from now. Um, what does that look like? Well, Deus is a workflow engine on top. It brings a set of things that Kubernetes has uh, said that they will not bring to the table. This includes cross-pod log aggregation. This includes release and rollback. This includes authentication and authorization um, and source to image. So git push. Deus master, we will take your code push, we'll turn it into a slug or a container, and deploy it into, into the Kubernetes system. Because this is a lot of, I mean, it's a big stack of stuff, right? Um, 
many different technologies at each layer of the stack. JS workflow also um, is Kubernetes native. So as the ecosystem continues to evolve, apps that are deployed and managed by the Deus platform should look and feel and smell like general applications that would be running in the context of a Kubernetes cluster. Um, we expect to live next to workloads as your organization gets better and starts to, not better, that's pejorative. As, as, your, uh, as your organization learns and starts to understand the new abstractions that live inside the Kubernetes universe, you can tie these apps together. You can start to learn um, from an organizational standpoint in ways that make sense for you. So again, at the top, we've got source to, source to image, log aggregation, application release and rollback, auth in, auth C, and then edge routing. So how do we get HTTP apps, uh, HTTP traffic into your application? Again, uh, why Kubernetes? Uh, so Deus v1, uh, we had the fleet-based scheduler that I mentioned. We ran into some problems with it because it's not resource aware. So especially under pathological cluster conditions like failures or new nodes arriving in your cluster, we would do some suboptimal scheduling decisions. So in the, in the V1 timeline, we said, okay, this container management ecosystem is evolving very rapidly. What does it look like? Um, so we did a POC uh, against Swarm, against Mesos and Marathon and Kubernetes uh, to really kick the tires and figure out how do these things behave, what are their strengths and what are their weaknesses. Um, Swarm was super early and not really ready. Um, Mesos plus Marathon got us a long way, but it didn't get us all the way, and we realized that we'd have to essentially write a custom Mesos framework to do what we needed to do. So the cost-benefit analysis from an engineering standpoint uh, left, you know, one, once compared to Kubernetes, it made sense. All right, Kubernetes all the way. So we sit on top of all the Kubernetes native abstractions, so services, replication controllers, uh, namespaces to deploy and manage your applications uh, into that cluster. As well, the Kubernetes uh, community is very vibrant, uh, and it's also informed by years of experience, you know, sort of guided and, led, guided and led by Google. I mean, Tim talked earlier, there's a lot of experience that's in each of those abstractions. The other, from a technical standpoint, declarative APIs are super powerful for us, powerful for us as we build higher order systems on top, of the, on top of Kubernetes. Instead of trying to manage state through sort of imperative API calls, you can say, all right, make the world look like this. The controller loops will do reconciliation inside, the, inside Kubernetes, and everybody's up, up and off to the races. Um, so that plus simple, and power, simple yet powerful abstractions like services and replication controllers. And I'll, see, I'll show you in a moment how that works when we're uh, deploying and managing applications. And then the design of Kubernetes itself promotes loose coupling. So um, once you kind of get your head around what label selection actually does for you, it unlocks a lot of opportunities for building, running, and maintaining applications in the context of Kubernetes. So things like canary deployments or blue-green become really simple and easy, uh, and that's really exciting. So now, it's demo time. We have demos for the demo gods. All right, everyone see in the back how it works. Okay. So what I've got, I've got a three node Kubernetes cluster provisioned on AWS using upstream Kubernetes, kubeup.sh. Uh, one, one server is the API uh, master, which you don't see here, and then we've got two worker nodes that we'll be scheduling jobs on too. Um, Here, actually, I'll do this down here. This is what the Deus platform looks like. Um, Deus itself is or Deus workflow is shipped as a set of microservices uh, that run as Kubernetes native components. We've got the builder, we've got a Deus the builder that provides source to image. We've got a controller, uh, which provides the API surface area for the simple CLI. We've got the database, which ma maintains state for all the Deus uh, applications and releases. Uh, we've got a Minio, which is S3 compatible object storage, a registry, a, a router, and then a workflow manager that, uh, that manages versions. Underneath that, you see there's replication controllers here, uh, which currently maintain the desired and actual state. So it does the reconciliation. We say we want one, ver one copy of each of these components running on the cluster at any, at, at any given time, and the replication controller manage that, manages that for us. And then down here at the very bottom, we've got all of the pods. So these are the actual pods that have been instantiated to satisfy the replication uh, controller requirements. So that's where all the, the business happens. 
So what I'm going to do is I'll throw this into a loop here. And in the lower right hand corner, this, is, this will just be the functioning of the platform. So as I create applications and push code to the platform, you can see one-off pods coming up to do work and then going away. On the left here, this is just my laptop. Uh, and I'm logged in. And what we've got here is a simple uh, application. Um, it's a Go app that'll just say, hey, um, I'm, I'm here. Creating the application, uh, we got oh, a new name, Vulcan Lambskin. That's pretty exciting. I don't even know what that is. Can you buy that? Uh, um, that's fun. Uh, Along with the, the crawl, uh, walk, run story, Deus Workflow supports three ways of getting your code into the cluster. Uh, the first one is via build packs. So if you've never containerized an application, you don't even know how to spell Rocket um, or Docker, uh, this is a, a really great way for your, app, for your application developers to self-service, right? Um, build packs created by Heroku, it's supported by Cloud Foundry. Uh, you can use a bunch of off-the-shelf build packs which take your code uh, figure out what type of application it is, what framework it is, and then the, the build pack is responsible for acquiring all of the dependencies and creating a slug with everything kind of laid out the way that um, uh, it needs to. So Deus Workflow supports this out of the box. So when I git push Deus Master, submitting the code from my laptop over git, I'm identified by my SSH key, and you can see here that we've got the slug build pod, which has been instantiated to uh, run the, the build pack. So here it detected the application was a Go-based application, checked for Go depths, installed the, the runtime version, and has finished compiling the slug. At which point up here in the upper right hand side, I'll make this a little bit smaller though it fits. That's probably too small. You can see the application, uh, Deus Workflow has created a service for Vulcan Lambskin. Uh, it has created uh, a replication controller which represents this, the, this code push. Um, and a one pod has been created by uh, Kubernetes. Right? So the cool part about this is this app lives in its namespace. Um, sitting on top of uh, Kubernetes service discovery and name resolution, any other application in the platform can communicate and talk to this app. So it's a great way to wire up a bunch of uh, microservices to each other. But notice on the left-hand side, all we did was a git push. It's pretty, pretty straightforward, right? Um, if, we say this was a Ruby application, and we got funding, it's now time to uh, do the thing that we do when we're writing Ruby, and that's just add lots more Ruby. Um, <laughs> fixes all the problems, right? Uh, scale this up to five. We now have five processes. Uh, what we did, the workflow, hit the um, use Kubernetes, set the replica count to five from one um, for this application. And, uh, and uh, Kubernetes reconciliation loops noticed that change and spun up a bunch of new pods, right? So we can now curl. You can see that this application is powered by Deus. And you can see that each of the pod host names down here, or here, are changing as the underlying uh, cluster manager is taking care of load balancing for us. Pretty slick. The other thing that we can do is Deus config set. Uh, again, going back to uh, the 12 factor methodology, um, configuration of your application should come from the environment rather than being baked into your application image. Right, so Kubernetes plus build packs. What we do here, um, the configuration has been submitted to the platform. The platform has created a new replication controller which maps to the new pairing of uh, source code plus the configuration uh, and is rolling out V3. So you can see V2s are going away, V3s are showing up, and the replica counts are decrementing and incrementing. So right now, this is what kubectl rolling update was in 1.1. For going forward, we'll be using the deployments API which does this for us automatically. But here you can now see that we are now powered by Kubernetes plus build packs. So that's the crawl mode for getting your code into production. 
the um, walk mode as you um, as your team becomes more comfortable, you want to change or have more control over how your application is packaged and bundled. Um, we also support Docker files. Uh, so your team can start describing their application and all of its dependencies in, in context of a Docker file. So much like a build pack, uh, we do this, uh, create, and normal cut purse, that's a good one. Dangerously rolling the dice. Um, much like build pack, we created the namespace, git push deus master. And when we see the Docker file, instead of doing the build pack stuff, we'll talk to the Docker daemon and create a container image for you. Um, and I'll also apologize, there's tons of debug output in the Docker file build right now. But um, it's doing what it's doing for the other, um, for the build pack based stuff. So this gives you more control, right? Your, your application developers uh, have more control over packaging, what goes into the container image itself. Um, as long as you expose a port, HTTP traffic will be routed to it uh, as appropriate. Just like um, build packs, deus, config, set by case plus Docker files. Same thing, configuration from the environment. Hooray, everybody wins. Also scales the same way. Um, and then the last, the last one that we support is referencing remote Docker repository. And this is really where we see most of the people who are using Deus end up, right? Your organization started out with build packs. Your developers figured out, okay, this container thing isn't so scary. They wanted more control. They ended up at Dockerfile-based uh, application um, definitions. And now you're in a CI environment where you've got, instead of developers building Docker files on the cluster, uh, they're coming out of a Jenkins pipeline, or they're coming out of a Spinner pipeline, or they're coming out of, you know, the thing that you cobbled together late one night on accident, which is usually how most passes get built. Uh, <laughs> say, oh my god, I accidentally a pass. And you're like, yes. Uh, uh, so that looks like this. Uh, Deus create no. Typing is hard. Rugged inventor. Oh, that one's good. I like that. Uh, Deus pull. Uh, Deus example. Go. So for this application, uh, instead of pushing, we will uh, pull from Docker Hub repository. Same thing happened. Yay. So this is, this is the Deus workflow. Um, this is how I would argue that, especially when we're changing so many things, it, Deus workflow gives your team an opportunity to, to change smaller, uh, smaller aspects, 12-factor application, gain confidence, and then ultimately end up move, being able to move faster as uh, you start moving into more Kubernetes native applications. Um, for that, uh, we've also got a tool called Helm, which is open source, um, and as at GCP Next, we announced that Google and uh, Deus joined forces, and now Kubernetes slash Helm is uh, a project to manage applications uh, in Kubernetes native. So we're super excited about that. Community is growing. We've got a lot of folks who are showing up at the project to work on it. Um, I like to end the demo by destroying my cluster um, using Helm. So Helm is a Kubernetes native package manager. It allows you to uh, interpolate manifests, push them into a Kubernetes cluster, run a bunch of template generation and stuff like that. So Helm repo list. Helm supports federated charts, and charts are these descriptions of software workloads. Um, they can be on GitHub or on private GitHub instance. Uh, Helm install. Uh, sorry, workflow. Yes, delete the world. And over here on the right-hand side, you'll start to see the replication controllers and services and the pods that are serv servicing those things uh, start to disappear. And I always like to think of it as you know, Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future playing his guitar. Starts to fade away. But it's okay, we'll bring everything back. 